Okay, so perhaps some more people will come, I don't know, but off the record I'll tell you something about myself, just to try the mic and to get you used to my accent. When I was 10 years old, I felt on my head. I felt from a tree. I was reading a book on that tree. Uh, fortunately, I was sitting on the lowest branch and the soil was soft, although it didn't feel like that. And uh, nowadays I prefer to read in safer places. So I wonder, are here some bookworms or passionate readers or second-hand bookshop lovers in this room? Please raise your hands. Oh, perfect. I am not alone. Thank you. This is the topic of my talk, and this is my name. So welcome to Bratislava again. I live in Bratislava. Reading and uh, language learning. Or, more precisely, how to read and read and read and learn some languages. Please take a seat if you wish. And this is the summary of my talk. Your power as a reader and how to use it. Then we will have one minute speed reading course. I wanted to talk about some cool books about polyglots, some useful books for learners, but I think that there will be no time for this. Nevertheless, uh, you can see this address over there, it's the address of my language blog, normally written in Czech, but I will put the um, list of all these books there. Okay, your power as a reader. If you have a habit, this habit equals energy. And if reading is a habit or a skill, it can be a resource for you. The main idea is how to use these habits to work for you, not against you. And the second idea is that it's easier to modify a habit than to create a new one. I'm going to mention some concrete activities and I am sure you've heard about some of these, maybe you know all of these activities, but there is a great difference between I know it and I have tried it, or I actually did it, or I am doing it regularly. Because as Wes, Wayne Gretzky said, you miss every shot you don't take, so try some of these activities. We readers, uh, we try to read books uh, in very early stages of language learning and uh, we don't know at that stage how to pronounce some words. So then our accent, our pronunciation isn't good. But what do you do? What do you do if you want to read? Let's say you are studying, you study Hungarian and you want to read your first book. Nowadays, luckily, you can go to YouTube and you can type this word, Hangos Könyv, Könyv means book, in Hungarian, and you will find many book, many audiobooks in Hungarian. Some of these books are translations of very well-known books that you probably know. I'll just read the Slovak uh, sorry, Slovak and Czech word for audiobook. Audio kniha in both languages, uh, similar to audio kniha in Russian. And uh, these books, these audiobooks are normally presented without text. Uh, the exception is when you have video book, a video book. So what do we do when we want to find the text? Do you know 
a good trick for this, how to find the text, the integral text of the book. Well, while listening to the audiobook, you type a longer sentence in the search field in Google, and if you are lucky, you will find the integral text. But take a phrase, not from the first chapter, because you will get only the first chapter. And when you are looking for a, an Italian book, use google.it, the Italian, ver Italian version of Google. Um, we can read also podcasts because podcasts are transcripted. Um, are here some people who study Latin? I don't know. But even for Latin, there is a podcast with monthly news on Radio Bremen uh, that is transcripted. Um, the second, sorry, what I just, uh -huh, okay. The second address is for people studying English, so you can find many transcripted postcards there, podcasts there, and also some books are read uh, on that page. And the famous New York Times book review has also some podcasts that are transcripted. When we are advanced readers, we would like to become advanced listeners. So you are watching a movie, you see these two gentlemen talking and you, you don't know what are, what are they talking about. Are they discussing an algebra problem? Are they talking about their favorite colors? Um, what do we do when we don't understand a movie? Yeah, what do we do when we are lost, perplexed? We find the subtitles, thank you. And we can find the subtitles in our mother tongue, in the language, in the studied language. I would first recommend to read the subtitles in your mother tongue to understand what this is about. Then read the subtitles in the studied language and then you go back to the movie, subtitled or not, it depends. But um, as you perhaps know, subtitles are not exact transcripts. So these are some useful keywords concerning movies. Subtitles, movie scripts, screenplays, transcripts. We can now read uh, videos on YouTube when we can see this CC icon, closed caption. So if you have a favorite subject, you just enter your keywords in the search bar, then you click filter, and then you click CC. Some of these uh, subtitles are robot created. These are no good. Up to now, I mentioned listening because first we have to re uh, hear well and then we can pronounce well. So now we are moving to pronunciation. This is perhaps shadowing the best activity for uh, speaking exercise. You have a recording and you just repeat the speech immediately after hearing it and of course you can read the text to it it helps but later on because we are readers we have just our book but we can still read aloud and when we try to express emotions change the voice according to the personage that is speaking we are reading, but we train our speaking skills. And if you, this, if you do these two activities, shadowing, reading aloud, often for a long time, 
your inner voice starts talking to you in the studied language. Sometimes we have a text and we would like to have a recording, so text to speech application can help and today you can find pages, sites where you can enter your text. It is converted to mp3 file and you can download the file. All this is for free. And when I want to, sorry, when I want to know how a very short expression is pronounced, let's say this Hungarian expression, I know what it means, but I am interested in the pronunciation. I let it translate in Google. I am not interested in the translation, but after the translation, this loudspeaker icon appears, and a robot-like voice says, some, says something like, So you have quite a good uh, approximation of the Hungarian pronunciation. Another possibility how to learn to speak is uh, reading plays, because plays contain 90% of dialogues. This is the title of my favorite American play, written in the 70s. Same time next year, and you can find uh, a movie adaptation on uh, YouTube. Okay, uh, but passionate readers like to read, so normally you read your book, you have read 10, 20, 30 pages. Nevertheless, when you come to dialogues, you should pay attention to dialogues when you want to improve your conversational skills. Perhaps you can read two or three phrases out loud. You can create some flashcards if you want to learn some of these interesting phrases. And for lazy learners like me, what I do, create flashbooks, it means that I am reading my book and from time to time when I see an interesting phrase I just underline it. it normally it's a phrase that you understand well but you would like to activate this knowledge. So you can translate this, page, uh, this phrase in your mother tongue, write it on the top of the page or uh, on the preceding page, then you wait a couple of days, month, and then you just flip through the book, you, you check whether you are able to use these phrases. Uh, I think you know these best friends for when working with flashcards, some spaced repetition software, Anki, Memorize. I would uh, recommend Audacity, it's a free audio editor and recorder, very intuitive, very cool. And a good monolingual dictionary, because if you are on B2, C1 level, creating flashcards, perhaps you want to create monolingual flashcards, and a good monolingual dictionary will help you with the meanings of the words. Uh, it helps you to show how the words are used in phrases. So ask the language learning community online what dictionary you should download or buy. I'll move to something that I call sandwich uh, reading. So up to now we had listening, hearing, pronunciation, speaking. Now I'm going to the vocabulary, how to enlarge our vocabulary. I'm going to give you a concrete example. Today I forgot my Japanese, but uh, five or six years ago I was able to listen to this Japanese audiobook, a translation of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and to read the text and to understand it. But 
First I had to do this sandwich reading. It means you read in layers, one layer in your mother tongue or a known language. So I would start with the first chapter. I read it in English just to know what this is about. Then I listened to the Japanese recording and I had the text. I was trying, my target was first uh, to find the correspondence between the speech and the text. Am I here? Or, or I was lost quite often. Perhaps I would repeat this with the first chapter, then I would move to the second chapter, again English, Japanese. And when I went through this book like five or six times, the first target was met. So I was able to listen to the Japanese recording and to see, yeah, I am here. The second target was to understand everything, comprehension. But again, I, I would continue these English readings because uh, like this, I knew the book better and better. So one chapter in English, then listening to the Japanese recording, reading, trying to understand everything. I would under, underline some unknown words or phrases. And after that, I would do some vocabulary mining. Uh, by the way, I printed the Japanese text in the very, very large characters. It helps with the kanjis. Uh, it's really helpful. And the last stage for me was uh, choosing some shorter recordings and shadowing this uh, to say something in Japanese. Uh, one word of warning. Uh, after all this, when I took only the text, without the recording, I was able to understand only about 60-65% of the text. These kanjis are pretty tricky, so the recording helped a lot. And what was worse, yeah, I was able to read manga, understand 70% or 80% of the text, but when I took a Japanese book, I still understood only 5% of the text. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if you take a language that has the same difficulty, but when it uses the Latin alphabet, I did this with Hungarian, this sandwich reading works very well. I went through six or seven Hungarian books like this. So, uh, I read one book only once, so first chapter. Slovak, Hungarian, Slovak. Slovak is my mother tongue. Second chapter, Slovak, Hungarian, Slovak. And when I read six or seven Hungarian books like this, I was able to read other books. So it's the alphabet or the characters that make the difference. Writing is perhaps the most, com most complex uh, language skill and uh, readers can learn to write. Even uh, writers, people who want to become writers in their own language, copy the works of some works of masters. We language learners, we can copy some interesting newsletters. You can make your collection of handwritten jokes, uh, basically you choose a text that you like and then you copy it with enthusiasm. Uh, you type it or you write it by hand. Copy and paste, no, it's, it, it's, inter it's very important that you write naturally like when you create the text. You, you have this feeling, I am the author. Thank you for the question. Uh, my linguistic idol <laughs> is uh, Heinrich Schliemann and he didn't use translations when studying languages and me too, I prefer to be immersed in the language. 
Nevertheless, I, from time to time, I use something that I call modified reverse translation. It's 90% of immersion and only 10% of translation. Normally, reverse translation means that you translate the text from the target language into your mother tongue and then back again. What I do, because I want to use the real language, I read the text ten times. I, I choose a text that I understand well. I understand everything, but I would like to activate this knowledge to speak like this, to, write, to be able to write, write this text, to generate it. Um, and during the first reading you can pay attention to something, to verbs, to conjugation, second times, let's say, to adjectives, etc. Perhaps the sixth time you are going to read the text out loud. Once you can read it and write by hand, for example, write it. And when you read like this, you have ten different, uh, you see this text under ten different angles, so you know it very well. And after this, translate it to your mother tongue. Then wait a while, play a guitar, feed your pet fish, just wait. Uh, you need to wait because you need uh, your shorter memory to forget the original text. And then you will use only what in the long term memory, memory uh, uh, stays. So then you translate this text back into the studied language. Check your translation, get some feedback, create some flashcards. Okay, so this is a short review of my talk. I'm going perhaps to speak about some books later. Habit equals energy. When you modify your reading habits, you can improve your skills in listening, comprehension, speaking, you can learn some idioms, you can enlarge your vocabulary, you can even improve your writing skills. Uh, oh yeah, I promised this one minute speed reading course. So, there's a problem with the mic and the loudspeaker and I would like to, let's hope it will work. Uh, so, what you need is a pointer and a book, that's all, your finger, a pen, something. And uh, first you go very quickly, you trace under the lines, you go very quickly, uh, like you take one second per a line, you just watch the text, you are not able to understand it, but you concentrate on the image of the letters of the uh, words. And you go through this page like three, four times. Your brain gets used to this uh, speed. And then you read the page. You go slowly. But n you understand everything, but you can remark, you can see that you are reading a little bit faster than normally. And of course you need to repeat this activity often enough for a longer period of time and you will read faster. Some people use speed reading, a speed reading software, that's another possibility. Okay, so how much time do we have for the books? Ten minutes, perfect. First, uh, some books about polyglots, uh, and I chose uh, some books in different languages because if you are if you study Polish or German, or, I don't know Italian, Babel no more, Babel no more. This book is a history of human speech from prehistory to the present. Very interesting. Hmm. 
we had a talk about Emil Krebs. So, uh, this man was perhaps the greatest polyglot of all times. And this is his biography in German. Emil Krebs, Courier des Geistes. Messenger of Spirit, something like that. And my beloved Heinrich Schliemann. Many books were written about him, but this one is realistic, well researched, and there is a special chapter about his lear uh, language learning. It's very interesting. You know Catalombe, and her book is available in English, uh, the Hungarian. This is the original title, Ich Tanulok Nyelvakat, in Russian too. Uh, the French professor Alfred Tomatis stresses the importance of human hearing and human ear for language learning. He worked with speakers, uh, actors, um, but also language uh, learners. Nusom tusne polyglot, we are all born polyglots, but, and he explains what this but means, how to listen, how to train your ear. Perhaps some of the authors of this book sit here, I don't know, because this book was written by many language lovers and polyglots, and they write about their passion for languages, about their language learning. There is a free, legally free PDF version online, you can find it. The Polyglot Project. Cartagineza, uh, Claude was editor, Claude Cartagineza. If you learn Polish, uh, Broniarek was an old-timer polyglot who had no recordings, actually, only books, perhaps, and he learned his languages at home. Perhaps he had some cassettes. How, we are, how I learned eight languages. I wanted to choose uh, at least one Slovak or Czech book about polyglots, and Mr. Elman was a Czech polyglot of Kozelne Zahrade Jaziku in the Magic Garden of Languages, and the Biak Jaziki, or How to Study Foreign Languages. And, in fact, he started to study his Chinese when he was a political prisoner, and he worked in, an, in uranium mines. A short history of languages. Eine kurze Geschichte der Sprachen. Don't sleep, there are snakes, life and language in the, um, in the Amazonian jungle. Very interesting book because it uh, speaks about Pidahara or Piraha people and their language is completely different from European, Asian languages, they have no numbers, the culture is different, no concept of war, no personal property. And the more you learn, the more we learn about their language, the more we learn by contrast about our own languages, about our own culture. Very interesting book. Hockey, Hockey's book, uh, The Quick and Dirty Guide to Learning Languages Fast or Fast because uh, he's American, <laughs> uh, a former army officer who went quite often to missions and he needed to speak with the locals. So he explains how to pick a basic knowledge of foreign language in a hurry. Very pragmatic, very useful. Um, some Japanese learners here, 
Yeah. Do you know this book? Is it useful? Yeah, it is. Because uh, remembering the kanji one, it, uh, the book uses some mnemonics, so you learn faster. And on top of this, you can use spaced repetition based on this book. Either you download an Anki pet package, or you go to this page, kanji.kohi.com. Uh, you use spaced repetition there online. You enjoy the community that helps you to learn. Uh, do you know this page? Okay, fine. Um, this book covers about 2,000 characters. The same author wrote Remembering Simplified Hanzi, so uh, Chinese characters. I didn't work with this book, but I think it's the same concept, so it could help. Vera F. Birkenbill, um, she was a very popular German coach and uh, speaker. Sprachenlernen leicht gemacht, um, language learning made easy. This book had more than 30 edi editions. Uh, language and culture are connected, and if you want to know European culture well, either you read 40 or 50 books, or you read only just this one. Uh, Bildung, alles was man wissen muss, education, everything what one has to know. Uh, it was translated also in Spanish. I don't know, I don't know whether an English translation is available. And one of the roots of our culture is the Greek culture. This is an Italian book, 900 pages, but you will turn the pages like this. It's very engaging. And this novel is faithful to history. It's about Alexander's life and how the culture, Greek culture spread because of him. Uh, one book in Slovak, Jazyk a reč, language and speech. Very interesting. Uh, now you can buy it only in second-hand bookshops, but perhaps there will be another edition. This is for beginners, when you would like a very moving story. Yeah. Das doppelte Lottchen, Lottie and Lisa. Uh, twin girls separated at birth who meet at summer camp and adapt adapted into film 20 times. And for beginners, again, The, uh, the Little Prince. Uh, in Slovak, Mali Prince. In Czech, Mali Prince. So ask when you are going to buy the book whether it's Slovak or Czech. <laughs> because then it's different <laughs> later on. Yeah, these, were my, these were my recommendations, and if you would like to have some tips uh, given by a real professional, Bernard Pivot was um, a, tele a host, he hosted very popular French shows, Apostrophe, Bouillon de Culture, La Bibliothèque Ideale, Ideal Library or Ideal Bookshelf. Um, this is, these are tips given by a professional. Okay, so now we have time for your recommendation tips. You can even write your tip on the board. And of course there, there is time for your questions. It's up to you. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to repeat this remark because of the camera. We have no second mic. Uh, Harry Potter, translated in many languages. Interesting easy, 
I don't know, uh, 8,000 words, different words in the first uh, book, in the fourth or fifth, 14,000, quite a lot. But yeah, you are right, it, it's available in many, many languages. Okay. So the first remark, uh, uh, I have to remember it. <laughs> uh, crime stories and uh, some romance love stories. Even this French edition, how it's called, I forgot. Uh, these love stories in French. Okay, and the second one. Uh, yeah, it's true. So, would you please write it on on the board? Uh, so the remark was that uh, this book is good, but Mr. Hesig wrote, remembering simplified Hansi afterwards. And perhaps he used the same structure, like with these. And for Chinese, this doesn't work as well as for Japanese. Learning Chinese characters. Matthews. Mm -hmm. The non Chinese characters uh, teaches you 800 words, uh, 800 characters. 800 so characters. Mm -hmm. It has a lot more detail and stories on each character. But this one, uh, read and write Chinese. Read and write. Both traditional and simplified Chinese. This is only simplified, I think. I'm not sure if they make mm -hmm. traditional version. This one is available for both. Okay, so the first book is for simplified. And the second one is how much? How many? 2,100 by Tato. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. How much time? Seven minutes. You got time for another? Yeah. For French. So are we speaking about learning French? Yeah. So your recommendation, if I understand well, is go to find some TV archives, French TV archives. And I think there is this address, I am going to write it. TV5.fr, perhaps. I N I N Thank you. So this is the page with TV with a 
TV archive. Ah, you want to find apostrophe? Yeah, it, it was, uh, I know apostrophe, it speaks about language and it's, it's useful for people who learn French. Apostrophe. That's for making you happy. <laughs> when you see someone. So apostrophe. Like this. Some other remarks, questions, tips. Okay, I, I, I will say this. So, we are speaking about, about uh, echoing or shadowing, and when we have a longer recording, we would like to stop it for a moment. There, it can be a problem. So your tip is uh, to cut the text and perhaps the recording too and uh, make some shorter. Uh, what I wanted to show, I am not able to find this Audacity thing, so I am going to write it because this Audacity software is very good. You can cut, you can create shorter recordings, you can repeat one sentence ten times very easily you edit you edit uh, your recordings audacity uh, how many of you do use audacity I don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Some more. Yeah, you are perhaps the first. Yeah, so I use a Kindle too, Kindle or some other reader that helps us to make... Uh, um, first, we can use an embedded dictionary, so we just click and we see the, we see the meaning of the word, and then we can just make some remarks and we can write our own text and we don't forget translation or something. So this is the last minute. I think 